Welcome to Microcontrol Systems Online Training Facility. This module deals with the MCS Magnum Diagnostics Package. The Magnum Diagnostics System can be broken down into a number of parts. The MCS Magnum System itself, Magnum's Compressor Protection System, Magnum's Energy Efficiency System, Magnum's Proactive Control System, Magnum's Diagnostics Analysis System, and the Magnum Touchscreen Graphics and Documentation Package. The Magnum System is designed to control medium to large chillers and rooftop units. It will support up to 20 compressors and has complete control support for the following. It handles scroll, screw, and centrifugal compressors. It handles variable speed on all compressor types. It handles electronic expansion valves. It will handle digital scroll packages. It has a heating and cooling system. It controls dampers, both fixed and modulating. It controls evaporator fans, both fixed and modulating. It controls condenser fans, both fixed and modulating. It controls multiple pumps on condensers and evaporators. It automatically switches to the backup pump if the primary pump goes down. Also does pump rotation. It has a boiler system. It can support cooling towers. It has a complete trending system, both static and dynamic. It supports BACnet IP, Modbus, and Yanshin N2 as native to the Magnum. And it supports BACnet MSTP and Lontalk with an adapter. The Magnum System Part 1 Compressors. Scroll compressors, both single and tandems, are supported. Screw compressors, both step capacity and infinite capacity, are supported. Centrifugals, including turbo core, are supported. Variable speed on scroll, screw, and centrifugals are supported. Electronic expansion valves for the evaporator, hot gas, and condenser slash reheat mix are all supported. Electronic expansion valve can be controlled on suction or discharge superheat or evaporator level. Digital scrolls are controlled using a 15 second time slice. Magnum System Part 2 Heating and Cooling Systems The Magnum supports cooling systems with chiller barrels and remote DX coils. It handles heating with reverse cycle heat pumps. It handles heating with modulating reheat. It handles heating with modulating electric heat. It handles heating with multiple boilers. The Magnum System Part 3, the frequency drive control. It handles fixed or modulating dampers, whether they are outside, return air dampers, etc. It handles evaporator fan speed based on static pressure in the duct. It handles condenser fan speed based on discharge pressure. It handles cooling tower fans based on discharge pressure or leaving temperature. Pumps are controlled based on differential pressure. The speed of the pump is decided based on the pressure in minus the pressure out. Magnum System Part 4 Trending. The Magnum supports 1,008 samples of all inputs and outputs. At a 10 minute sample rate, you have one week of trending data. Sample rates are user set and can be as small as one second. An optional PCMI storage card is available that can be installed and collect additional data. A 1 gigabyte PCMI card provides years of additional data. The Magnum System Part 5, the Building Management System. 
The building management system allows target reset, run stop, demand, and full load amp limiting. BACnet IP, Modbus, and Johnson N2 are native to the Magnum. BACnet MSTP and Lontalk require an adapter. BACnet IP allows the BMS to auto-discover. This makes it extremely easy to collect all of the information with the Magnum and get it loaded into the building management system using BACnet IP. It gets all the relay and sensor names, it provides the Magnum states, and it provides the last five alarms. The Magnum Compressor Protection System. It protects against high discharge pressure and low suction pressure. It provides protection against low oil pressure and low oil sump level. It provides protection for high compressor amps and low compressor amps. It provides protection against high discharge temperature and high motor temperature. It provides for no flow and can automatically shut down and when flow is reestablished automatically start back up if the Magnum is not controlling the evaporator pumps. It protects against phase loss. It protects against low suction superheat and low discharge superheat. It provides the compressor starter transition. It provides for low chilled water out. This is the Magnum Energy Efficiency Module. On tandem scrolls, loading is one compressor from each refrigerant circuit, thus getting each coil wet and improving part load efficiency by 12 to 15 percent. The condenser control is by individual step, providing better discharge pressure control and allowing higher energy savings. Frequency drive control of condenser fans allows finer tuning of the discharge pressure, again allowing for higher energy efficiency. Electronic expansion valves allowing better efficiency by 10 to 15 percent. And since the controller is adjusting the capacity of the compressors, it can also adjust the electronic expansion valve as these changes are made in made, thus providing seamless loading and unloading. This part discusses the Magnum Proactive Control System. On high discharge pressure or low suction pressure, the controller will unload if the ability is there to provide as much capacity as possible without shutting down. It will generate a warning alerting the user on what the current status is. On high discharge temperature, the controller will unload if required or hold the loading until the micro allows it to continue loading again. We have discovered over the years that if you trip on the internal motor overload temperature sensors, after four or five times you start to develop hairline cracks in the motor windings and the compressor will short to ground eventually. By using the high discharge temperature to control the loading, the microprocessor eliminates this hazard. On low amps, the controller will post the alarm. This means a mechanical device is holding the control power on. When we fire the relay, if we do not see any amps, it means that the control power for the compressor relay is being held off by a mechanical device such as a Klixon device. The Magnum watches the slope of the controlling sensor and holds loading or unloading based on the rate of the approach. So the objective is not to overload or underload the machine, but to move the chiller to exactly where it needs to be to provide the cooling required at this point in time, providing the most energy efficient position. 
This is the Diagnostic Analysis Part 1. The next slide shows a print-to-file. The print-to-file is a spreadsheet showing the current status of the Magnum. It shows last time on and off, run hours, cycles today, etc. for each relay. It provides current sensor input values as well as min and max for today. It shows current values for analog outputs. It shows all alarms with times that it occurred. It shows the current set point values. With this data, it's like a road map, allowing the user to diagnose a problem. You may look to see when an alarm has occurred, then go back and check to see when the compressor was turned on or turned off, and verify the exact operation of the machine. This is a slide showing a portion of the print-to-file spreadsheet that was printed out of Notepad. This is the Diagnostic Analysis Part 2. The next slide shows a graph. The graph allows the user to select any group of inputs or outputs and plot them. This may be done through the trending data or it can be done in real time. It plots relay outputs and digital inputs at the top, and it plots sensor inputs and analog outputs on the bottom. The setup screen allows for the selection of the scale and the divisions of the scale. It allows up to eight digitals to be placed at the top part of the screen and up to eight analogs to be plotted on the bottom part of the screen at the same time. With this data, you can diagnose the interaction of data, allowing the user to diagnose and make adjustments to the system. This is a picture of a graph. This particular graph is for a digital scroll package controlling the development offices at the MCS corporate headquarters. You will notice that fan, cool to, and heat to are on the top, and it shows you the suction pressure, a second pressure, suction temperature, zone temperature, zone humidity, and the actual compressor percentage. You will notice on this particular one, the yellow line at the bottom shows the compressor is currently running at about 36% of speed. This is the Diagnostics Analysis Part 3. The next slide shows a printout of the info from an alarm. The info is a spreadsheet of the last 30 seconds of all sensor information related to this circuit. It is provided second by second. It provides suction pressure, discharge pressure, oil differential, amp, suction temperature, discharge temperature, and so on. It provides the time from minus 29 seconds to zero seconds when the unit was turned off. With this data, you can diagnose the cause of the alarm. This spreadsheet, you can see the various pressures, temperatures, electronic expansion valve percentages, and so on from minus 29 seconds to zero, which is the point at which the compressor shut down. This particular alarm was generated from a low oil differential on compressor number one. If you look at the oil pressure, you will see it was at 132.2 at minus 29 seconds and 134 at the time we shut down. So the oil pressure was increasing, but obviously not fast enough to eliminate the problem. If you go over to the fourth column from the left, you will see the oil differential, which is the oil pressure minus the discharge pressure. And you will see it was at 43.5 and got up to 44.1. And when you compare that to the set point, it is below the set point, and consequently the compressor was shut off to protect it. 
This is a touchscreen graphics. This particular unit shows an Aeon Turbo Core chiller. And you will notice at the bottom there are selection buttons. This particular display is the system overview. You could select compressor 1, 2, 3 overviews. You could also select the evaporator and the condenser overview. Or you could select the manuals. All of the manuals and wiring diagrams for this unit are stored in this unit and can be displayed on this touchscreen. If we select the manual and the drawings, we will obtain this display of the drawings. You may then go to any section of the drawing and enlarge it so that it is easy to read. That's the end of the diagnostics package. If you have any questions, please contact your manufacturer or MCS.